You know, I don't really trust Christian celebrities and there's a good reason for that. It seems like there's a trend of people in Hollywood that they're over time they're becoming more and more and more evangelical. And it seems like every couple of years somebody comes out and starts going to church and the evangelical crowd looks at this as, you know, this is a victory of the gospel. This guy's got his life turned around. And it seems like more and more celebrities in Hollywood are more and more open about this faith that they've had the entire time. And many evangelicals look to this as some sort of victory for the gospel. You know, the gospel saves celebrities too. This is amazing and wonderful. The trend that I'm noticing is most of these celebrities are often identifying with these Hillsong and Bethel type churches. Now this is either one of two things. This is either a great move of God or this is just another end times deception. I'm leaning towards the latter. Despite the, their openness about their faith and their church attendance, I just don't trust these guys. And I want to give you three reasons why. Number one reason I don't trust these celebrities is because of the nature of the entertainment industry. You know, the entertainment industry is absolutely wicked to the core. And if you're going to operate in this realm, you have to play ball by their rules. If you're going to be in this industry, you're going to have to say and do very immoral things if you're going to be used by these people. You're going to have to show up at events that are filled with cussing and beer and immorality. And not only that, you're going to have to accept their lifestyles without any question. And, and you cannot resist this whatsoever. You have to play ball with these people. The greatest Bible example of this is Lot. Lot saw the money and the wealth down there at Sodom, and the Bible says that he vexed his righteous soul with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Basically, Lot immersed his entire life in wickedness of his day, and boy, it ruined him. And the truth is, if you work for this industry, you become employees of these record labels and of these uh, movie studios. You are their employee, and you have to do what they say, even if it dishonors God. This is why girls like Carrie Underwood put out singles like I don't even know his last name because she's contractually obligated to put out immoral filth or else she's going to be in big trouble. And this is why guys like Chris Pratt are cussing and doing nude scenes and openly mocking Jesus in his movies because he has to do that or else he's going to stop the gravy train. The money's going to be cut off. And this is why girls like Lauren Daigle will never speak out and stand for what the Bible says about homosexuality because if she does that, her career as a singer is over. She's done. These people are employees of movie studios and of record labels. They have to do these things. And so if you're going into this wicked entertainment industry, you have to play by their wicked rules. And so the number two reason I don't trust these Christian celebrities is because of the nature of spirituality in of itself. Let me tell you something. Jesus has always called his people away from the world and unto himself. He never has allowed his people to stay in sin. He always calls them out. That's what the word holy means. The word holy means set apart. If you were to like cut a loaf of bread and you were to take pieces of that bread out of the loaf, uh, that, that's what, in a sense, what the word holy means. It means you're called out of that. You're, you're not a part of the loaf anymore. You are special. You're called out. That's what being holy means. It means being set apart. And to be a holy Christian, you have to be set apart from the world. Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. And so if you're going to follow God, you're going to have to follow His Word. And His Word says to follow holiness and stay away from sin and wickedness. And there's really no way you can do that if you're in Hollywood. The heart of a person who's following Jesus will be like the words that Frances Havergale wrote down years ago when she said, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Or their heart will identify with the lyrics that Fanny Crosby penned when she said this, Take the world, but give me Jesus. All its joys are but a name, but his love abideth ever through eternal years the same. You know, I've been a Bible student for years and I have tried my best and I just cannot reconcile someone who is chasing worldly pleasure and worldly fame with someone who's chasing and following Christ. I just can't find a way to marry the two together. I just don't think it exists. I don't see how you can do it. Throughout the Bible, Jesus said a lot of things, but it seems like one of the overarching themes of his ministry was he demanded a singularity of affection. He wanted to be the object that you love more than anything. And the truth is, it's hard to love Jesus and love the world at the very same time. 
You know, at West, there's people called polygamists, and a polygamist is a man who tries to love two women and be married to two and three women at the same time. And I think a lot of people today are trying to be spiritual polygamists. You're trying to be the bride of Christ and the bride of the world at the same time. And I just don't know if that's going to work. 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. See, you just can't love the world and love Jesus at the same time. You just can't do it. Can I tell you that this world system that we live in as Christians hates God and doesn't want anything to do with Christ? And uh, Jesus came on the scene, they crucified him. John the Baptist came on the scene, they killed him. The Apostle Paul came on the scene, and they beheaded him. And then all of a sudden, these people like Kevin Durant, Chris Pratt, Carrie Underwood, and many other these Christian celebrities come on the scene, and man, they're just showering them with love and affection, showering them with Oscars and Grammys and, and MTV Music Awards, and just loving on these people. And I'm telling you, something doesn't add up with that. Something is wrong with that. Any Jesus that the world is not trying to crucify is suspicious to me. And so due to the nature of true Christian spirituality and walking with God, I don't see how you can be loved by the world and chase worldly fame and worldly pleasure and all that and still love Jesus at the same time. I just don't know how you can do it. Number one, because of the nature of the entertainment industry. Number two, because of the nature of spirituality. But number three, because of the nature of a double life. Listen, you can't live a double life. The problem with a double life is that eventually you'll have to give up one of them. And the Bible is filled with calls to decide which one you are. You're going to serve God, you're going to serve Satan. You're going to serve God, you're going to serve the world. Joshua 24, 15, And if, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Elijah said in 1 Kings 18, 21, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And see, the thing is today, we're, we're trying so desperately hard in American culture to try to marry the world and Christ. And, and I think a lot of churches today are preaching another Jesus because they're preaching a Jesus that the world loves. I just don't know how that works. Look at me right here. I'm going to tell you something you need to hear. You cannot serve Jesus the way that he deserves and cuss in Hollywood movies. You cannot serve Jesus the way that he deserves and be seen taking your clothes off on camera in Hollywood movies. You cannot follow Christ the way he deserves and openly mock the Lord Jesus Christ in a Marvel Comics movie. You can't serve Jesus the way that he deserves and openly deny what the Bible says about homosexuality. And you cannot serve Jesus the way that he deserves and be completely out of church for months of the year because you're too busy on Sundays playing in a professional sporting event. Sorry, that's just not how this works. Either he's king of your life or he's not. These people have a big decision to make because either they're going to have to stay in their positions of worldliness and doing debauchery and doing sinful things and keep the money coming in, or they're going to have to stand for God and take a very big chance on losing everything because of their love for Jesus. And I may be the only person on the internet saying this, and I'll say it, that's fine, but if Chris Pratt's going to serve God the way the Bible defines serving God then Chris Pratt's going to have to quit Hollywood. And see, this is what troubles me about Lauren Daigle. It seems like Lauren Daigle's getting more and more and more popular with the world. And to achieve more and more fame with, with the world, you have to get farther and farther away from the Lord. And see, I'm not saying these people are not saved. I don't know what their spiritual condition is. But I'm saying this, that if these people are going to develop into mature Christians and really be sold out for God and live for Jesus and be effective in their Christian life, they're going to have to walk away from all that stuff. Lot went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, and it vexed his righteous soul. Lot was not above this, and neither is Chris Pratt, neither is Lauren Daigle, neither is Kevin Durant, and nobody is an exception to this. You go down to Sodom and Gomorrah, you will vex your righteous soul, and it will pull you far, far away from God. And so, in conclusion, I want to say this, that the church needs to stop looking to the world for its heroes. Why don't you look to the church that you go to for your heroes? Instead of celebrating David Chappelle and Dave Duchovny and David Bowie, why don't you go celebrate David Brainerd and David Livingston? Instead of lifting up people like Jim Carrey and Jim Morrison and Jim Henson, why don't you lift up guys like Jim Elliott? How about instead of looking to guys like William Shatner and William Defoe and William Baldwin, why don't you look to William Carey as a spiritual hero? How about we forget about the Charles Barkleys and the Charles Bronsons and start lifting up the Charles Spurgeons of the world? And instead of the George Jones and the George Clooney's and the George Lucas's, how about we lift up the George Mueller's? Why don't you look to that lady at your church who's been faithfully playing that piano for 40 years and make her a Christian hero instead of Lauren Daigle? 
How about you go to that guy that's been at your church who's been running a bus for 20 years, picking up boys and girls, bringing them to Sunday school, and make him a Christian hero instead of Chris Pratt? What? Why don't you just make a hero out of your pastor? Why don't you just make a hero out of your Sunday school teacher? Why don't you just make a hero out of your Christian parents who took you to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night all of your life and quit fooling with these celebrities? Forget about the Tim Tebow's of the world. Forget about the, the uh, Chris Pratt's of the world. Forget about these famous people. They're not the heroes. The ones in your local church are. So instead of looking to the TV and looking to Hollywood and looking to these famous musicians as your Christian heroes, why don't you look to the ones that God gave you an arm's length away? And why don't you look to the ones that you have in your local church? You know, I think the judgment seat of Christ is going to be a big surprise to a lot of people because the folks that the world looked to and didn't think they were a very big deal, God thought they were a big deal. And the people that the world looked to and thought they were a huge deal... At the judgment seat of Christ, we may be surprised to learn they weren't that big a deal at all. <laughs> God bless you, friends.